Hey, today I'm gonna to take you through the process of making these Japanese cherry blossom branches. Phenomenal project, my third graders absolutely loved it. Can't wait for their parents to see them after they're done being displayed around the school. What you're going to need for this project is a six by 18 cut piece of either um, white sulfite paper, 90 pound, or something a little heavier um, like watercolor paper. For the background, I used bleeding tissue paper. For the branch, I used India ink, blown with a straw. And then lastly, you can use acrylic or tempera paints for the students to make their blossoms. All right, let's get started on the whole process. To get started, I'm using India ink with a eye dropper, dripping just a little bit of ink, no more than a few drops onto the base of the paper then students use straws to not blow on the ink but to blow from behind the ink to kind of steer and give it an organic shape instead of just straight lines that we uh, would normally draw with a paintbrush the the blown ink has such a better um, more realistic organic shape so after the students have blown their ink we set that to the side to dry All right, the next period, once everything has dried, usually day two, students receive their artwork back. They're oohing and aahing over their branches. They look so cool. Um, then we're gonna take some bleeding tissue paper. I divided my tissue paper with the help of some students who were early finishers the previous class. We divided them into two different containers of warm colors and cool colors. And I also gave each table a spray bottle filled with water and then the students also shared a jar of water with a um, broad paintbrush. So, so here I'm giving the paper a quick spritz with the spray bottle. If you don't have spray bottles, students can just use paintbrushes and get their paper wet by brushing on the water. Then students are going to take the tissue paper and lay it over the area that has just been um, wet from the spritz. It's really important, I learned this the hard way um, because I had never used bleeding tissue paper before, that you need to get the page wet, apply the paper, then re-wet the paper again. And that's what's gonna help the color to really bleed out and it, the water um, both above and beyond, above and below the paper will saturate it and allow those colors to mix and blend really well. So from here, you can see I'm just gonna speed up the process to see what the whole thing looks like when it's covered. Put the wet papers on a drying rack and let dry overnight. All right, day three was the student's favorite part. This is when we wiped off all of the now dried tissue paper to reveal the beautiful um, uh, paint that was just left behind from the bleeding tissue paper. After students took off the, all that tissue paper, we put them back into some trays and we're gonna recycle that tissue paper and use it for another project. Students then either use their fingers or some bundled Q-tips 
to make their cherry blossoms. We use some different um, whites, uh, magenta, light pink, and students um, realized that they could layer those colors and have um, some different values of pink in there. You can see those examples right there were done with Q-tips while this um, student is using their fingers to create some different types of petals. Something I failed to mention, it's not, it didn't show the process, but I'll explain it to you, is we use students' Chromebooks to translate their um, English name into Japanese or Chinese characters, and that's how they sign their artwork.